Hi there! This is your Chief Marine Mate Edu at your service. Our first discussion in this segment is the part series of liquefied petroleum gas cargo operations. And before anything else, if you haven't subscribed yet, kindly click on the subscribe button, notification bell, and click like, give it position. On the side note, as a disclaimer, I would like to make it clear I am not affiliated with any training centers, neither I represent them. The same thing goes for the simulator maker, where it was patterned in this lecture. Nevertheless, it is of bona fide intention to voluntarily endorse such entities. Example, such courses may be available in the following training centers like GMI or Gigamari Incorporated or Compass Training Center and to name a few. Likewise, the LCHS of liquefied cargo handling simulator is made by MPRI Analytics, Division of L3 Communications. I can vouch for it when it comes to performance and accuracy. You can check with this company for your simulator needs or requirements, especially for maritime institutions and training centers alike. It is important to see gas carrier in production video which was uploaded earlier. If you haven't seen it, it is advisable to watch and get an overview of what this topic is all about. The main focus is the general cargo operations on board fully refrigerated LPG and semi-pressurized fully refrigerated gas carrier, addressing both LPG and chemical gas cargo. We shall use general standard practices, which is based on experience from manuals and textbooks alike for better accuracy. Let's begin. Let's assume that the vessel or LPG ship carrier just came out from dry dock in South Korea. Likewise, she has been given orders to sail and recently received order notification from the operations department. The message says, advised to proceed at economical speed. Hence, the master then gave orders to the second mate to compute an estimated distance and arrival time at varying speed. Distance estimate was 6,120 nautical miles, 16 days steaming at the speed of 15 knots. Take note that in LPG carrier ship trading patterns, this prospect of loading, destination, cargo to load is always dynamic, meaning to say changes may occur at any given time, be of different cargo as long as it's stipulated in the COF or certificate of fitness, its loading capacity, delivery dates, basing on LECAN, notice of readiness, and many other factors included in the charter clause assuming the vessel is under charter. Now take note that there are different kinds of voyage order in any LPG ships. It could be a bareboat charter wherein the vessel is like being rented as a whole. Uh, for a longer period by a different uh, company or it could be a voyage charter it's like a one-time uh, passage uh, from loading to discharging and so on and so forth and many other contracts that can be arranged between the shipping company or the operator or owner of the ship let's familiarize you with the LPG gas carrier type of ships that we will be using in this lecture as you can see in this uh, screen display, we will be using the independent type A prismatic type of containment system. As you can see, this is basically the exact layout of what you will expect or see inside of a cargo containment. You can see the bulkhead there, it's color green, and the hull 
containment, the bulkheads, transverse bulkheads, and the longitudinal bulkheads. Also, you can see where the palas are. So it's a prismatic type of cargo containment system. This is the actual image to the entry of the uh, tanks, uh, cargo domes. And this is your uh, actual uh, cargo containment uh, structures inside where you can see the transverse bulkheads, longitudinal beams, and of course uh, other frames. And this is in another view. This is the entrance and uh, ventilation spaces or the void space. This is the entrance to the void space. And this is underneath the bottom of the tanks inside the void space. These are the ventilation uh, pipelines for the void spaces and some sensors. This is a gas detector uh, sensor ahead. And this is liquid level detector and the liquid sump where you can adduct the uh, liquid that may uh, leak out from the cargo tanks or as a result of humidity where water condenses. And for a better understanding of the uh, lecture, uh, we will use these uh, images pattern in the uh, liquid cargo handling simulator. As you can see here, uh, we have four tanks. Basically, uh, they are uh, divided into two, which they have a bulkhead, so I have, as I have shown earlier. So this is cargo tank number one, port and starboard. Cargo tank number two, port and starboard. Number three and four, port and starboard. And you can see as well the ballast tanks, colored blue, the ones are empty while the yellow are the fuel tanks. And uh, since we talk about prismatic type design, type A independent tanks utilizing this uh, model, and this is the, uh, the cross-sectional cut view of the cargo tanks. So as you can see, on this side, we call it the port side, and on our right, we call it the starboard side. And you can see the two pumps in there. And this uh, line in the middle is the bulkhead. And there's a leveling valve and there are three pumps actually two main cargo pumps for each on the port side and on the starboard side basically it resembles into one tank because the bevor on top are common and they have put only a bulkhead to minimize the sloshing of cargo which have been discussed uh, also in the gas introduction uh, video segment so okay this is the prismatic type tank and this is the adapter inside the void space as you can see, while these spaces below, the bottom ballast tanks and upper tanks. And this is a simple uh, 3D overview of the uh, vessel. And this is, these are your uh, apartments. So again, we have four tanks. One, two, three, and four. Fourth and starboard. And bulkhead in the middle. Number two, port and starboard number three port and starboard number four port and starboard and also we have the ballast tanks bottom and the upper tanks in color the blue right. same thing in the other side this vessel is designed to be used for the carriage of liquefied petroleum and chemical gases in the fully refrigerated condition determined by the following limitations for example its maximum pressure is about 0 0.25 kilograms per centimeter square and minimum temperature is about negative 48 degrees celsius and a maximum density of about uh, 0.69 kilograms per decim cubic meter and as mentioned we have four tanks of prismatic shape capacity is about uh, 25,000 cubic meter self-supporting structurally independent of the ship's hull each tank is enclosed in a cargo hold and is bounded by the transverse bulkheads as I've shown the image in an earlier display and also the double bottom of the ships the ship sides and the main deck also we have a two pressurized deck storage which is capable of carrying about 140 cubic meters of lpg cargo or carrying 75 cubic meter of ammonia for the storage and since our uh, first uh, sequence of cargo operations to be discussed is inner thing 
then I will only uh, familiarize you first with the equipment uh, that we that are involved. First is the uh, inert gas uh, generator, the main inert gas generator. So as you can see in here, we have uh, main inert gas generator, and you can see all the pipelines uh, laid out for one, two, three, four cargo tanks, including uh, the blower uh, for uh, air or aeration. And there are two blower and I will discuss later the capacities of this and also we have a low uh, capacity inert gas generator or IGG for uh, tapping off uh, inert gases into the uh, void spaces so yeah and other than that uh, I'll uh, just introduce you with the cargo pipelines layout and this is the main cargo pipeline layout so as you can see again uh, we are on the number one tank number two and three and number four so basically top side is the uh, fourth side of the vessel and the bottom side is the uh, of this uh, schematic diagram is the starboard side of the vessel for the tanks as laid out and of course the pipes are just schematic diagram in reality of course they are not laid out as exactly the same with what you see in a ship but of course in uh, theory and applications you will be able to see that the lines are exactly the same as they are actually being laid out in the uh, deck side of course uh, you just have to trace the line one by one so as you can see it's color coded basically the red lines uh, represents your before uh, the yellow lines represent your condensate uh, or liquids and also the uh, cyan or a uh, little bit of uh, blue color presents the liquid cargo that is coming from your manifold when you are loading or discharging so these are the uh, manifold area that we will be discussing about and the tanks wherein we will be starting to do some topics with regards to inner thing now having laid out the main scenario and familiar as you with the details of the model ship that we are going to use let's start now with our main topic note every liquefied gas carrier must have a procedure and arrangement manual which gives specific operating instruction these are the uh, forms like gas form C or gas particulars that you will find on board and of course any related manuals that your company has this following sequence outlines is pattern in general cycles of operations basing on the pna manual of this model ship the vessel can be prepared in three days completing inerting operations thus this gives the vessel an ample time for gassing up and long cooling down to be done when the vessel arrived to the loading port after which standard processes correspondence is done then loading may commence so looking at this cycle of operation we shall start in at this point the sequence is laid out in order from top to bottom so i'll be ending this uh, video in this segment so that the proper lectures will be carried out on the following segments of videos for each and every one of these cycles.